<laughs> this is her pre-race routine. All right, folks, here we go. We got one final long run before the two week taper begins until race day. And we got our little pre-run routine. We got some Martin gels in the pockets for the race. It's raining. But as we learned yesterday from the famous words of Bill Bowerman, there's no such thing as bad weather, only soft people. Let's go. Here we go. Ah, last long run, 19 miles, quarter mile speed work, every three quarters of a mile, two mile warm up. Here we go. It's Sunday, it's raining, it's windy. Welcome to the training in the Pacific Northwest, baby. This is where it gets done, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter the temperature, doesn't matter the weather, doesn't matter the conditions. It just gets done around here. Let's go. Mile one, 854. So while I'm getting warmed up here, I thought it could be helpful to share some things that have been working for me this time around in this training cycle. And first off, I hired a coach, John Booth. Shout out my coach, John Booth, with Pure Endurance here in Corvallis, Oregon. He has been the perfect coach for me. It feels like we've been working together forever. I have learned so much and I have regained newfound senses of curiosity when it comes to this sport and endurance and fueling and recovery and the importance of sleep and the right nutrition and different methods of training and just doing different things that I've never done and getting new perspectives. So that's the first thing, first and foremost, from what I'll say, it's been the best investment I've made in a long time myself. Secondly is I have prioritized my sleep, which is not something that I can say I've done effectively and well in the past, right? So I've been at the minimum seven hours of sleep every night this entire training cycle. And I notice the differences. I notice my body recovering. I notice my legs feeling fresher, feeling ready for the work, feeling like they've been able to actually really feel the benefits of the workout that I did yesterday and today, feeling it that next day. You know, sometimes I'm getting eight to nine hours of sleep now at times, maybe one or two days a week with that, but feels good to prioritize sleep and also to be okay with getting more sleep. I think that I'm probably not alone in the sense of feeling like I want to maximize the most out of each day and I used to sacrifice sleep for that and as I get older as life becomes more complex as there's more things going on in life I realize that the more quality sleep I get the more quality days I'm having so that's the second thing third thing for what it's worth I just went uh I was 47 days on a plant-based diet and I felt really good not too different than how I typically feel because I don't typically eat that much meat to begin with. But it, for what it's worth, like I'm here on my last training run day, feeling really good. I did have my first non-vegan meal last night. Shelby and I had a little date night, date day in Portland. We went to our favorite Thai place, Thai Peacock, and I had to get the chicken fat Thai. It was delicious. So but I don't plan on like just indulging in non-vegan and non-plant-based meals again. You know, I feel, I feel really good. And I think that the results show that everything that I'm doing has been working. So another food for thought, like you keep getting good results, keep doing the things that you're doing. Try to articulate why so that you can articulate your success. 
and then you can repeat that. All right, whatever else comes to my mind, I'll share with you as we go. My arm's getting tired. People that do this consistently make it look really easy. So here we are, still raining. But we're still getting after it. Let's go. Here's another thing that I've done that's working. I've stopped and I've done dynamic stretches to make sure that I'm fully ready to go for my workout. The old me, not a chance. I'm running every step of the way. I'm not stopping. You know, just being of the mindset that I can't stop, won't stop. But sometimes it makes a whole lot of sense to warm up properly and warm up effectively so that we can do the work that needs to get done effectively and feel good once we're having done it and continue reducing the risk for injury and staying healthy. So it's been a total mindset shift. I have even got okay. We're at mile one and a half right now and I'm walking. I'm literally walking. This would have never happened three months ago before I started working with John. And I, I have come to realize that it is okay to do the things that you need to do to go get the work that needs to be done. So, but here we go. That was enough of that. I feel good. Now let's go get some of this work. Here's another thing I've learned. There's the importance of electrolytes. And I won't even lie, like, I can't tell you all the details of the science and the exact benefits when it comes to scientific breakdown. Like, you know, I'm not gonna lie and say that I can, but here's what I can say. My coach emphasized the importance of getting enough electrolytes in the form of sodium and potassium and magnesium. And what I can tell you is that the more that I have used them and got them into my system, the better runs and endurance and performance I've had. Direct correlation. Get your electrolytes in people. Mile two, 825. Just getting the body ready and primed for performance to go out and stretch yourself is so important. You know, I have had to go so much slower on my slow runs, which has been huge. That's a topic in itself. But also, one to two miles typically, warming up at like a nine to a 9.30 minute per mile pace. I would have never done this in the past, but I'm so okay with it because it's working and I'm getting faster and I'm seeing results and I'm making sure that my body is ready to go for the workout ahead. And staying disciplined in doing this, it took discipline the first couple weeks to be okay with doing this. But you know what, now it's just habit. Now I look forward and my body looks forward to feeling good for these workouts and getting warmed up and feeling ready to go. So do a, do a proper warm up. Static stretching inside is something I typically do followed by dynamic stretches, right? Swinging gates, leg gate. Wow, it's raining, it's coming down. Um, and then also starting off easy, you know, and then stretching, proper stretching routine on a cool down, cooling down for the last 10 to 15 minutes of a run, easy, right? I'm just letting you know, this is what's been working for me. Maybe you got things that are working differently for you, but, I'm just sharing what has been successful in this training plan. And another one comes to mind, having a plan. Every day we got a plan. Every week we have a plan for what we're gonna attack each day. It's all laid out in training piece. And we communicate on the, on the app. Coach and I go back and forth. Here's the important part. We execute it. However, we know when to adjust. For example, this past week, I got sick, so we had to move some things around. We had to shorten a couple workouts. We had to take a, a hard, what was going to be a hard bike workout and make it into a 45 minute easy recovery spin to make sure that I wasn't overdoing it, wasn't getting, I, I took a day off. It's okay to adjust. It's okay to adapt when is necessary. Have a plan, be okay with adjusting. Let's go. For those of you that have been rocking with me for the last year or so, you know that I dealt with some 
serious foot issues last year in 2022. Plantar fasciitis, shin splints. They wouldn't go away. They sidelined me basically the entire year. And the thing that I learned is to get those feet strong, right? We're doing, we're asking so much of our feet. So much, oh, mile three, 746. Got the first speed interval in there. All right, but the feet, we require so much of them. We're doing so much pounding of the pavement, pounding of the trails, miles on our feet, right? They're literally the foundation for our body. And I may be mistaken, but I do believe they have the most bones of anything in our, in the human skeletal system. And so continuing to strengthen the muscles and the fascia and everything that helps support the foundation is super important. That's what I did. I started doing, I started going maybe a little granola on everyone, but I was doing mowing the lawn barefoot. I was doing laps on the neighborhood barefoot. I got the Vivo barefoot shoes that I still rock to this day. Basically 90% of where I go. And I have, knock on wood, not experienced a single foot issue since when it comes to plantar fasciitis and when it comes to chin splints. I'm not saying it's gonna be the end all cure all for everybody. I'm saying that strengthening my feet worked for me. Here we go. Mile four, 741. Here's another thing that has worked for me. I've started training with gels and nutrition while on the run. So typically every four miles I've been taking in a gel. Martin is what I've been using. And on my bigger run that I did last week, test run, wanted to simulate race day. So I was taking in more frequently every three miles. And so that's another thing that's worked. These gels. Let's go. Mile five, 729. Mile six, 750. Just came up a couple hills, thinking about what coach told me last week, which is don't burn all your matches coming up this hill. Maybe it was me trying to show off or it's important to keep your ego in check, especially early on. Burn them later. There'll be a time for them. Anyway, save those matches. Mile seven, 656. Had a nice downhill there. Thinking about floating. That's been the concept that we've been thinking about going down hills. Higher leg kick on the back end, thinking about bringing your heel to your butt and letting those feet float. Float, baby. Mile eight, 722. Mile eight, you know what time it is. Mm -mm. Always look forward to it. Never gets old. Mile nine, 734, 10 miles to go. Feeling good, baby, let's go. Mile 10, 737. Mile 11, 707. Feeling good. Let's go, eight more. Mile 12. 743, I think. I think it was 743, I don't know. But it's another four mile block. You know what time it is. This time we're going calf, baby. Once you go calf, you never go back. And it's caffeine all the way from here. <laughs> here we go. Mm-hmm. Let's finish this thing out, baby. Let's go. Mile 13, 728. 
I think that last mile was 723, not 743. I don't know, we'll find out. Here we go. Nothing but straight headwind this last mile on the highway, making you earn it. Gotta love it. Feel like I'm running backwards. Let's go. Either way, mile 14. 729 hard 729 let's go mile 15 742 mile 16 737 sugar jay's ice cream right there shelby and i have been there the last two nights in a row and it feels amazing downtown corvallis we're bringing it home we got three to go it's calf time Let's go. Mile 17, 750. Another thing that I did this training cycle is I switched up my shoes. I've been running in the Hoka Clifton's for years now. And you know what? I just kept finding myself injured one way or another. Maybe it was the shoes. Maybe it was my own training plan and my devices, but anyways, I went to the Nike Pegasus because I wanted to get out of a, of a daily trainer that was so cushioned and in line with my minimalist barefoot approach, I feel like these Pegasus, I'd heard good things about them. I felt closer to the ground in training and they've been great no injuries feeling good here we are on the final long run doing the thing thanks uncle keith for the birthday present shoes here we go last two miles mile 18 758 we're closing in let's go Nineteen, eight thirty. We gotta go one more. We gotta round this thing up to twenty. Got some chafing going on. Right hip flexor super tight. Feet are feeling it pretty good. I just want to feel some discomfort, you know. Let's go finish out this last mile. Wrap this thing up and hit taper week, baby. Let's go. Mile twenty. 8.30, two hours, 35 minutes, and 22 seconds. And that is the end of the hard training. We are officially two weeks out from Eugene Marathon. The rain has now stopped. Now that I've stopped running, it is officially taper season. These last two weeks here, we go.